Zach Wilson is one of the biggest draft busts in NFL history. Today, we'll be exploring the rise and fall of the kid who was supposed to save the New York Jets. Wilson was born in Draper, Utah, playing quarterback for Corner Canyon High School. While he did stand out as a D1 talent, he was not widely recruited out of high school. As only a three-star recruit, he was recruited heavily by BYU, Iowa, Minnesota, Boise State, and more distinguished Power 5 programs. He even committed to Boise State in the 2017 summer before decommitting after the high school season and ultimately signing with BYU. At BYU, Wilson was the youngest freshman quarterback to ever start for the Cougars. The talent and the athleticism was certainly there, but Wilson did not break out as a college star until his junior season. Wilson threw for 3,692 yards, 33 touchdowns with a measly three interceptions, which amounted to a passing efficiency rating of 196.4. He even received a PFF overall passing grade of 95.5, breaking Joe Burrow's record of 94.9 since the metric was created. On top of the aerial breakout, Wilson scored 10 rushing touchdowns. With this record-breaking season, Wilson was locked in as one of the top quarterbacks in the 2021 draft. However, his draft stock would reach new levels on Friday, March 26th. On this day was the infamous Zach Wilson Pro Day. Wilson's performance in his Pro Day at BYU absolutely skyrocketed his draft stock. Scouts were drooling at the arm talent and mechanics that this guy possessed. Let me put into perspective some of the quotes that were coming out of these scouts' mouths. Quote, I'm blown away by Zach Wilson. I feel like I'm back watching almost a Patrick Mahomes again. That's how I feel when I'm watching him. It's Aaron Rodgers-ish. He has the best arm in the draft. The mechanics are flawless. They are flawless. As I watched, and I watched every throw from this season, to me, there is a distance between number one and number two here. I'm sorry. He is clearly the number one for me. There is a space between him and Trevor Lawrence, and I really like Trevor Lawrence and think that he is worthy of the number one pick, but it is just all the plays and everything. This gives you an idea of the hype around this kid heading into the draft. As for that last quote, I don't believe that anyone in their right mind honestly thought Lawrence wasn't going number one, but Wilson was set to be locked in at number two. We know what Trevor Lawrence is turning into in the NFL now, so it's incredible that anyone put Wilson and T-Law in the same stratosphere as we got closer to draft night. Wilson was ultimately selected second overall by the New York Jets, who were officially punting on their third overall choice in 2018, Sam Darnold, and starting fresh with a new gunslinger. The 2021 draft actually saw the most quarterbacks in NFL history taken in the first three rounds, which could very well change in 2023. Those other QBs, though, included Trevor Lawrence at one, Trey Lance at three, Justin Fields at 11, Mac Jones at 15, Kyle Trask at 64, Kellen Mond at 66, and Davis Mills at 67. Wilson signed a four-year, $35.15 million deal with a $22.9 million signing bonus. After striking out with Darnold, the Jets felt as if they had finally gotten their franchise guy. In the past two decades, from Sam Darnold to Ryan Fitzpatrick, Geno Smith, Mike Vick, Mark Sanchez, and even Brett Favre, the Jets really felt they were finally hitting the jackpot at the signal caller position. Let us explore how this panned out. As a rookie, Zach Wilson was made the starting quarterback for New York. He would face off against his Jets predecessor Sam Darnold in week one. 
He actually impressed in that game with 258 passing yards and two touchdowns, but ultimately lost his debut. In his home debut in front of the New York faithful in week two against the Patriots, things did not go as well. Wilson threw four interceptions, two in his first two passing attempts, losing 25 to six. Was this the beginning of another failed project? The next week, Wilson lost 26 to nothing to the Broncos and wouldn't win his first game until week four, impressing in that game as well. In week five, he lost the Atlanta Falcons throwing another interception, putting his total at nine through the first five weeks of his career. He was the fourth NFL quarterback ever to be intercepted in each of his first five starts. Now, pretty much every rookie QB in the history of the NFL has had their struggles, but when you are included in a historically bad statistic alongside Deshaun Kaiser, Zach Mettenberger, and Blake Bortles, you probably aren't doing something right. Wilson ended up getting hurt in week seven against the Patriots, which is when the legend of Mike White would be born. He returned in week 12 and won, but would then go on to lose four out of his last five starts in his rookie year. He was showing promise towards the end, however, not throwing an interception in five games. The Jets finished the year with four wins and 13 losses, believe it or not, improving from their previous season where they went 2-14. and 14. His final rookie stat line was 2,334 passing yards, 13 total touchdowns, 9 being passing, and 4 rushing, and 11 interceptions. Certainly not the worst for a rookie QB, so there was no reason to believe that his talent wouldn't lead to a big jump in 2022. However, this was definitely not the case. His sophomore season took a hit before it had even begun. He suffered a non-contact injury in a preseason game against the Eagles that would sideline him until week four. Wilson, in his return, led his team in a fourth quarter comeback victory. The Jets would go on to win three straight without Wilson throwing a single touchdown pass. As long as they were winning, people were starting to ask, do the Jets have their guy? Should the league be alarmed? Has Zach Wilson arrived? Not really. Making our way through the season, the Jets lost a game 10 to 3 to the Patriots. Wilson's post-game comments started riots in the media. When asked if he felt that he had let the defense down, Wilson simply responded with no. This brought forth questions of his leadership and accountability. In a game where he only scored three points, maybe he truly felt that his offense did everything in their power to win and that the defense maybe should only let up two points next time. Immediately, Wilson was demoted to the third string quarterback on the Jets behind legends Mike White and Joe Flacco. And I'm not even talking about prime Joe Flacco. I'm talking about 38-year-old Joe Flacco, who the Jets felt was a better option as a backup than a guy who they had taken second overall just one year prior. If you can't tell already, the free fall of Zach Wilson's career is already in full swing. In week 16, he actually got another chance after injuries to Mike White, but was ultimately benched for dual threat Grey Cup champion Chris Strebler after a poor performance yet again. This would mark his second time being demoted down the Jets quarterback chart in the 2022 season. And you can even argue that this time he was the fourth string after Mike White, Flacco, and Streveler, respectively. What an absolute roller coaster of a 2022 season and honestly past two years for Wilson. He showed promise towards the end of his rookie campaign only to throw it all away with one of the worst sophomore seasons of all time. After the season, Jets owner Woody Johnson even said that the quarterback position was the missing piece for the team moving forward. 
That's right, the Jets organization has already given up on a guy that they took number two overall just two years prior. One of the fastest rises to the top of the NFL prospect pool has ultimately led to one of the quickest collapses in history. Wilson's career in the NFL is certainly up in the air currently. Lucky for Zach, the XFL is always an option these days. No one knows what the next move for this kid is. At least as of right now, the Jets are set to acquire most likely Hall of Famer Aaron Rodgers in a trade from the Packers. Wilson will look to sit under Rodgers for a year or two in order to maybe learn how to play football at a high level. Even then, will Wilson ever start in the NFL again? What a crazy question to ask in just two years for a top draft pick, but it's certainly a possibility. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to like, comment your thoughts, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, everybody.